Hello, what's up? My name is Dr. Nima Romane. We are here in beautiful Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. I'm here with um, Roxy Paradoxy. Um, Roxanne is a good friend of mine that I've known now, apparently from um, from Facebook, according to Facebook, 10 years today. 10 years, ten years today is our 10-year friend anniversary. So, um, Roxanne was at my overview experience last uh, week. Was it last week? Two, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, and she's been in Vancouver, in British Columbia, ever since. And uh, it's it's been an incre it's been an interesting road that uh, that that we've had. And she's been to a few um, of the workshops that I do. And what I do, I mean, uh, is I help people uncover their truth and then live their purpose and clear from uh, mental anguish, stress, anxiety, depression. And so I seem to find um, myself crossing paths quite a bit with this young lady at pertinent times in her life. And um, she's a musician, as you can see here, from the guitar. And so we want to talk a little bit about depression and suicide. Uh, it's, a, it's a topic that it's very taboo. Not too, we, we, more and more people are, are talking about it. Um, it's something that is very important that we keep discussing and continue the conversation. It's something I'm very passionate about sharing because I know what it's like to feel like you're at the end of your rope. And I've, I've helped many people through that. And what I do is I, I do it from a first-person perspective because I know what the emotional conflicts are that get us to that state. And it's a very controversial topic because most of us, um, we, we call it a chemical imbalance. Should we take medication? Shouldn't we? To say it's not a chemical imbalance is dangerous to some because it's um, creating a stigma that makes people wrong for taking medications. But if that's what they need to keep going, they shouldn't feel ashamed about it and so on and so forth. And so there's such a huge discussion and the point that I'm trying to make is that pills don't actually teach skills. And what I've been saying all along is that mental illness, aside from nutritional uh, requirements that, you're, that your body's not getting, social requirements, movement requirements. Um, hey, what's up, Elena? What's up, Kat? Um, what I wanted to share about this is mental illnesses, quite often when the requirements are taken care of, it comes from a inauthenticity it comes from an inauthenticity it comes from when you are holding withholding lies it comes from when you are trying to live a life that's not in alignment with who you truly are when it's whether it's politics whether it's religion whether it's society we have this deep inner yearning and knowing of who we truly are yet when we don't honor it we tend to inject other people's beliefs into our lives and thinking and judging ourselves for not living that however the consequence of injection of other people's values is that we start to get this depression. we start to get this paralyzing sense of depression of anxiety of feeling like we are lost and drifting and feeling like we are hopeless, hopeless. Yeah. and so uh, Roxanne came to me at, was here at the overview experience a few weeks ago so I'm doing a follow-up session with her and um, she was you know, you want to share a little bit where you were at and uh, where you were where you were coming from because the reason why I want you guys to see this um, story is because I want to I want you to see yourself in this mm -hmm. and see um, how brave this uh, young woman is and what she's here to do and what she's here she's here to play a big game and as her coach I'm pushing her to. <laughs> Get a really the comfort zone. get really uncomfortable and to share her story because in the sharing of the story is where the transformation happens. So, mm -hmm. if you want to, I'm just um, want to share on this topic of suicide, depression, that kind of thing. What's been your experience mm. through that over the just recent mm -hmm. recent months? What's happened? Well, I found that recently I just haven't had a direction and I, I felt like valueless. I felt like I didn't have a voice and I didn't have any purpose to my life. And so as a result of that, I was just like, what's the point of living? Like, what's the point of going on? And you keep having these self-deprecating thoughts that kind of eat away at you. And um, so it was really difficult. Like, I found like I was at my, my rope's end. 
And what I discovered through talking with Nima is that the biggest, um, the biggest lie that I've been telling myself is that I haven't, I haven't had a voice or I haven't been heard. I haven't had an opportunity to be heard. And so um, he based helped me on, work through that. Based on what? Ba see, we based all have a little voice of a dark passenger. Hers is, I don't have a voice. I'm not heard. Right? Yes. Based on, usually, experiences from our past, mm -hmm. trauma, abuse, you name it. And um, she hadn't really worked through those. So today we, we discovered mm -hmm. some stuff. So what was it? Well, I never realized to what extent my past had actually cost me how much it had cost me in terms of like the, the voices and what it was telling me I was worthless or I was inadequate or I, there wasn't a voice worth hearing inside me and so um, so based on that experience yeah. from the past what did you exp it was a it was a past trauma that we worked through so we did what's called the overview method and we go into past really challenging traumas and by the way anything that you haven't resolved in your past all the time yeah. over and over and over again in multiple situations especially when you're going through a transition especially if you're transitioning from a job from a move from a relationship these triggers that you still are walking around with going to counselors telling your little pity party story or not dealing with and running away from and just covering up or sedating yourself from show up Mm -hmm. And so you've been noticing them showing up and what had been the impact of these voices? I'm not good enough. Nobody wants to hear me all of that. Mm -hmm. What has happened to your music your social life? What has been what had been going on? No, no, no. Yeah. What, what was the, the impact? Yeah, so the impact was I basically isolated myself. I went from having a really um, I loved performing I loved singing online and I had a really nice fan base that I absolutely loved connecting with and um I just disconnected completely and I lost touch with it and I stopped myself from singing and I stopped myself from writing and I, st I was basically like putting myself in situations where I couldn't and telling the story that you're lost and telling myself a story that I'm lost and that I don't have a voice to be able to share with other people so in the overview method we went to the past scene of trauma where that occurred where it all came from and it was a scene where she was three years old and what revelations did you have about that scene uh, the revelations about the scene were that it ultimately helped me in finding my voice and in realizing that if I didn't go through that trauma, if I didn't experience that pain or that... It was a physical, it was a physical altercation with a man where she was held down and her hand... My throat was being held back and so I tried to scream and I couldn't. I tried to get help and I, and I couldn't. Yeah. So, by the way, can you believe that you're sharing this? No, because this is yeah, really difficult. <laughs> she has never shared this. I've known her for how many? Like ten years. Over ten years. And now. she has never shared it with me in other scenes. She'd been blocking that. She didn't want to go there. Finally, she said, "It's costing me too much. I want to go there." We cleared that, and the revelations that she had about that very traumatic scene where she was being held down, and her throat was being kind of restrained. And what did you discover? It was because of that experience that I was able to feel voiceless, and as a result of feeling voiceless, I knew what it was like to be unheard. I knew what it was like to be, like to experience real trauma, and then that helped me to relate to other people who were also experiencing trauma and to develop the music and write the songs. And what is the gift that you have? What is the superpower that you have on this planet that come hell or high water you are known for that 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 has helped transform the people's lives and in, in, in the people who've had the b bounty of listening to your songs we're going to hear her sing in just a minute so stay stay with us so what it's music it's music so how many song songs writing. over 100 185 i think 185 and it is her mission now to publish these songs in the form of CDs and all of that or just put them out so put that them people out can experience and to do them professionally so if you hear this share this and tag somebody who's in the music industry that's going to help this young woman get this out to, to, <laughs> to certain people because who who is it that you would love to reach and why Everyone. What's, what's the Every message what is that voice what is that voice that was um, 
Un awakened and mm -hmm. unleashed that day, what does the, 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 the voice always tell you in these songs? Well, the voice basically is saying that we, that we, there are issues that we can come across that we need to address, but that also that we're not alone in what we're feeling. And if we're feeling like we're, un we're not alone, then it makes it a little bit easier to, to deal with, right? Because mm -hmm. one of the biggest things about depression is that you feel like you're yep. suffering alone. Yep. The isolation factor is huge. That's why we have a community of the art of uh, powerful alignment where we talk about these issues and we ask questions and we dialogue. And um, So uh, the important thing here is, and what else does that voice say? To share it with other people and help them transform too. Bingo. So um, huge revelation was this entire depression, this entire feeling of not wanting to live comes from what? From being inauthentic, from not living with my values, trying to live up to somebody else's, or not being authentic and not serving other people. So what we'd like to do is to serve you and anyone you know who's going through this uh, struggle. I just want to let you know, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for your attention, for the for paying attention, for sharing the stuff that, that we put out, that I put out, uh, for tagging people. I, I'm so grateful. And what I want to do is to give you guys this gift of my good friend Roxanne sharing a beautiful song that she wrote that was meaningful to her. It's called what? Waiting to Expire. It's called Waiting to Expire. For somebody you know who's in that situation, this is an example of someone taking her dark passenger, which is depression, anxiety, and using it, channeling it, not making... And what was, what was Actually, blocking you? what was interesting about this song is it wasn't... With most of my songs, I don't feel like I've written them. I feel like I'm going through a really difficult time and I need some outside source to kind of help me through it. And I'll sit at my guitar and I'll start writing and then this great advice comes through and I'm like, oh my God, I should probably follow this. It's called oh The Voice. I share this. It's called The Voice, and it's in Roxanne, it's in me, it's in you, it's in all of us. It's just, there are resentments, there's guilt, and you know, what we worked on today, there's resentment, and there's guilt that and blocks, shame. and shame, that blocks us from actually seeing it and expressing it. So once you learn how to clear that, you get connected to this power that you have no, you just, you can't believe is available to you. So I want you, I want you to see the power of connecting to that voice and when you do it for the intent of actually serving humanity with it. So I want you to really um, share who is this song for? I know it was for you. You wrote it for you, really. Well, but who would you... For me, it but came would, through you. I who would you like to experience that? Anybody who's experiencing any sense of feeling lost or feeling like you don't know what you're doing in your life or how, how to deal with it or you're just waiting for time to go by, this is basically... Cool. Let's do this.
Welcome. That was great. Beautiful. Is there, any, is there anything that you'd love to say, considering where you were even 24 hours ago <laughs> to where you are now as far as the transformation in who you've become <laughs> <laughs> with your change of, of perception and what, what you're up to now? It's amazing the shift that can happen. It's just a tiny little shift of perception, perspective. Thanks, Amanda. But um, what people, like, what we don't realize is that everything that's happened to us is actually serving our highest purposes. And when we can come to realize that that's the case, then it just makes everything else make sense. Because it wasn't, it wasn't for no reason, you know? Like, to suffer without purpose is just suffering. But to suffer and have it worth something, and have it contribute to society or humanity, so that beautiful song, Waiting to Expire, was probably written at a time where you weren't so, things weren't so shit hot with life, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like your inner voice is giving you your direction. next move and your direction. And so the take-home point of this is actually um, consider that there's a voice inside of you, and that instead of reading a bunch of words from dead people, why don't, why don't you start paying these dead people who have written these scriptures basically went through a shitty time they listened to their inner voice and then they wrote it out and they lived and and lived in alignment with it and so we have the same capacity to go through challenging times and then all of a sudden turn in and listen to that voice and let it kind of um, Others. let it serve others and so what happens is we make it about us and I've been there we make it about us and our fame or whatever how am I looking and am I do I look good you know am I right do I look good and then that paralyzes us from actually serving and so the benefit of the the, the, the resistance is that it forces us to find why mm -hmm. and so I think what we just did here was we have a tendency, especially as artists, as creatives, as people who want to put out and do good in the world, to have that right um, mindset to do it, but then reach a level of success, and then what happened? Well, we feel unworthy. We're like, who am I to have this? Two parts that happen. Yeah. That little voice that says, who am I to make such a difference, and who am I to have it? And then the other part and that... And the selfish part. The part that goes, fuck, I love this attention. Like, good thing that I don't have that problem. Shut up. <laughs> so, so the cool part about this is that once you recognize that and then turn your sights and alignment back into where, where authenticity is in service, then you see that voice serving humanity. And so I really hope that you'll tag and share somebody that needs to hear this post. Um, and please join the Art of Powerful Alignment group where we have these, com you know, constant conversations about growth, about challenge, about turmoil, about transforming stress into success, taking your past history and, and making it part of your stepping stone to greatness rather than a, a block or something that holds us down. And so old stories of trauma do suck, but they're very common and they're possible to clear and then take action and serve. And so my goal here is to share this and so that you can get a little piece of, of her little message of waiting to expire like how often are we not stepping we're afraid oh my gosh we're afraid of taking that leap and just going into the fear into the void and just grabbing what's ours pretending that we're living here um uh, yeah can you, ricardo says can you please share the lyrics in the group couldn't understand a great part of the lyrics but would really love mm -hmm. to yeah absolutely sure. we're going to 100 percent we're going to, uh, I'm going to get Roxanne in the group, The Art of Powerful Alignment, yep. to uh, to publish the lyrics. Um, yeah, she has a very soft voice, and so Hopefully you're going to hear it. Here. And if you guys can donate to her cause, she can put out a freaking CD, and we can all enjoy it in, in a professional manner, blasting in our car. And so... Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Roxanne. For those of you who are struggling and stuck and in need of a change, a push in the other direction, um, consider what uh, Roxanne did and come to one of our live events. The, uh, the overview experience we're going to be having in June, in March, excuse me, in July, excuse me, in June in, in, in Montreal, and we're going to be doing July in Vancouver and October 
September, October, we're nailing down the dates in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Finally coming back to Toronto. So it's going to be pretty awesome. So is there anything you wanted to share before? Right. Well, thank you so much for listening and for the feedback. And I hope, I hope the music gets out there to help somebody out there who's going through the same thing. Now, I just want to let you know, when I told her after our session. I didn't want to do it that we were going to do a Facebook Live and she was going to fucking perform this for everybody. You're gorgeous, Aww. Roxanne. That's Karen. Thank She's you, from Karen. Australia. Wow. So, um, I told her, I said, after our session, you are going to be speaking up and we're going to do a Facebook Live and you have to share this message with the world because the world needs to hear it. And she's like, no, no. She went through a bit of a panic attack. Total. A bit? A total panic attack. But I'm an asshole. <laughs> the thing is, me. I'm an asshole. Do. I'm like, ah, 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 you're going to fucking do it. And at the end, how do you feel? If I said, okay, honey, okay, our session is complete. You got that amazing realization and we're not going to do anything with it. And mm -hmm. yes, your fears, that's right. You're too scared. So I don't want to confront those silly, fearful feelings. So we're not going to make it public. And we're just going to keep you silent. And we're going to keep that voice just silent. We're going to just keep keep that voice silent. And and, and what what would what would that have been like for you? Well, it would have been reliving the whole unheard. Unheard. So the, this is the value of having a coach. Yes, Bonnie, it was awesome. This is the value of having a coach. Kick your freaking ass. Hard. Hard. Kick your butt. And actually say, you're going to do it. You're going to have the difficult conversation. This is actually the first time I've gone on a live, on a live feed. Because I've been in such a bad place that I didn't want to go online. I didn't want to show my face. I didn't want to do anything online anymore just because I was in such a bad place. So first time and I think three, two, three years. Something like that. Like, well, I find it fitting that it happens to happen on Easter. <laughs> the resurrection. Oh. <laughs> of Roxy Paradoxy. Welcome. You heard it here first. The resurrection of Roxanne All right. on Easter. Coincidence? I think not. Guys, I love you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love you guys. And I just want to say thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for following. Thank you for your personal messages of inspiration. And reach out. You're not alone. Reach out. We're here to build a community, a tribe of people who are working towards expansion through their fears, through their anxieties, through these stories of transfer, through these stories of victimhood, past it, bust through them, feel those fears and step into it. And um, I'm just so proud of the, the group, the community that, that we're kind of creating with this whole concept. So awesome group to be part of. And what did you think of the overview experience, by the way, when you came? It was awesome. It was good. You guys, you guys have to come. You should totally come. It'll, it's mind blowing. You have to life changing. apply on the website and we'll see if you're ready. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for your listening and uh, let's continue the conversation in the Art of Powerful Alignment group. Take care.